The next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 10265 in the name of Linda Fabiani on East Kilbride has real heroes. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. I would again invite those members who are leaving to do so quickly and quietly and I now call on Linda Fabiani to open the debate. Seven minutes please, Ms Fabiani. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. It gives me great pleasure um, to, to hold this debate. Uh, the motion entitled East Cobride Has Real Heroes, which it certainly does. But the, um, the reason for having the debate is because of Scottish Television's Scotland's Real Heroes Award, which is sponsored by the Royal Bank of Scotland. I would like to say a few words, first of all, about Scottish Television, because I think it um, should be noted that STV, um, in my part of the country, certainly, in the city of Glasgow and all the cities. The reason I'm, I'm saying in my part of the country is because I know somebody that represents the borders uh, would be able to come in and say there's issues there. Uh, but I know that these are being addressed as far as possible. But generally across the country, Scottish television has become like community television for us. Cares about communities, does a lot of work in communities to recognise those that make our communities so strong. Um, I found that particularly in East Cobride when we had a wonderful lass called Kayleigh McLeod from STV who worked there and is still very much missed uh, by the community groups and the charities with which she did such work and raised awareness of their work for them. So that's what Scotland Real Heroes is about. And it's about the Scottish public um, voting for the winners as this particular series celebrates people's efforts and dedication. And for reference, it will be on from 15th August and each episode every Friday thereafter. And it pays tribute to people who work so hard in their communities and who have ambition and who have generosity and it's about improving things for other people. East Cobride has loads of that. In the, the 20 years or so that I've worked there, I have found that very strongly. People from all walks of life, people from all age groups, uh, who work very, very hard to give others a helping hand and to improve things in their area. And it's all these things that this programme recognises. The shortlist awards, Entrepreneur of the Year, Sporting Volunteer of the Year, Hero Neighbour, Community Champion, Community Project, Environmental Project, the Courage Award, which is one I want to talk about today particularly, and the Carer of the Year Award as well. And then there's a Young Real Hero of the Year and the Hero Animal of the Year. Um, I think our own Mr Q should perhaps have been uh, put in for that, for putting up with us all and all the noise he has to put up with in this chamber. And as I said, it's about viewers voting uh, for the nominees, the ones that they think most deserve to win the Real Heroes Award. Past winners, I would like to congratulate them. Um, there have been some fantastic winners. And I would also, before I get on to East Kilbride, uh, to speak about the current nominees. They come from all walks of life, and I think they should all be celebrated and I hope there's people in here that's going to mention them. We've got folk from Glasgow, Inverclyde, Skye, West Lothian, North and South Lanarkshire, Caithness, the Highlands, I hope I'm not missing anybody, East Ayrshire, even Edinburgh's got people here, uh, Clydebank, Portobello, um, Argyll and Butte, Aberdeen and Aberdeenshire. But say as far as I'm concerned, uh, the ones that should win this live in East Cobride because East Cobride uh, has real heroes. <laughs> I'd like to say a few words about the nominees uh, from East Cobride. The first one I would like to talk about, a uh, fantastic name, Moz Mafia. Fabulous. Four ladies, Elma Ross, Lynn Morrison, Leslie McGinley and Connie Smiley, um, who have been nominated for the Carer Award. And they're certainly known locally as Moz Mafia, and we're all quite scared of them. <laughs> These are ladies um, who, who work in various kinds of voluntary work, but who have fought so hard, so very, very hard, for the rights of their children. And there's a big issue here. Uh, young people uh, with special needs who go to school together, 
who form friendships and social relationships, perhaps go to the youth club together. And what happened here was they left school, they carried on going to the youth club, but when they were then too old, hit 21, too old to go to the youth club, weren't allowed to go anymore, their social network fell apart. And all of a sudden, these young people were isolated. So Moz Mafia got together with others, and what they did was they started up a weekly club, started off in Claremont Parish Church, now it takes place in Calder Glen High School every Monday night. And they offer services, social services, trips, activities uh, for 18 to 25-year-olds. And they were nominated by Alison Gilmer. Uh, they, she nominated the Hangout for the award because of her um, niece, uh, Stephanie Kelly, who was left wheelchair bound after an accident. Fantastic service, growing all the time. And I want to pay tribute to the Bruce Hotel and the Sky Lounge in East Kilbride, which have just offered regular discos free of charge. The other person in East Kilbride who's been nominated, the Courage Award, is Jenny Cook. And I'm sure many of you have heard of Miss Jenny Cook. Fantastic young lady, uh, aged 11 years old. Jenny has ulcerative colitis. And aged just six years, Jenny had her diseased large bowel removed because medication was no longer working. But even through that, Jenny started fundraising and persuaded her family and her teachers and her school friends to help out. And she was only five when she organised her first fundraiser, which raised £5,000. She's quite a gal. She then, a um, couple of years later, met Derek McEwen, who set up the Catherine McEwen Foundation in memory of his mum, uh, who died of Crohn's disease. They've been fundraising ever since, and Jenny is absolutely astounding. If I tell you, at age 11, she has raised over £30,000 for York Hill Children's Charity. And she's not stopped yet because her next target is £50,000. Uh, by the year 2016. She's becoming very well known because she's a very, very special young girl. She's on Radio Clyde Gen uh, regularly with George Galloway doing the Jenny Cook report of how her charity work is going. And she has become terribly good friends with our own First Minister. In fact, uh, she was one of his guests at the recent opening ceremony uh, of the Commonwealth Games. I think his nose will be a bit out of joint because since she got interviewed by Nicholas MacDonald uh, for this TV programme, I'm afraid Nicholas MacDonald is the one that's uppermost uh, in Jenny's mind. <laughs> she also does great budding work with other young people at York Hill, which is so very, very important, and runs a huge fundraiser every year, called Tea Jenny, which takes place in September. So I see I'm running out of time, and I could talk about these nominees forever. What I think is particularly great is that both Moz Mafia from The Hangout and Jenny Cook are meeting up soon to give each other joint support going into this competition, because that's what the community of East Cobride does, and that's what it's like. So I'll just close, presiding officer, thank you by saying, yes, East Cobride has real heroes. Thank you very much. I now call on Margaret McCulloch to be followed by Stuart McMillan, four minutes or thereby, please. Thank you, President Officer. I would like to begin by welcoming the opportunity to speak in this motion this afternoon and also by congratulating Linda Fabiani for securing this debate. This week has seen the Parliament confront issues which divide opinion from data security and armed police to Gaza and the big decision in September. But in a week in which we have tackled the contentious and the controversial, it is a particular privilege to be able to address a topic that unites us all. Scotland is a charitable nation. We are a given nation. And we don't just give money to good causes. We give our time, our energy, our ideas and our creativity. There are real heroes in every community and this is our chance to recognise the examples set by just some of them. So let me echo Linda Fabiani's remarks and put on record my own congratulations for all those who have been shortlisted. Let me also thank the RBS for making these awards possible and STV for telling the stories behind the awards. Hopefully those stories will inspire others to act or will at least foster a greater appreciation of the many acts of selfless, selflessness and kindness that happen every day in every community in every part of Scotland. But I also want to mention my own part of Scotland. 
East Kilbride, where I have lived for over nearly 40 years and brought up my own family. And I can honestly say East Kilbride is very much a village in itself. And for people with learning disabilities, the transition to adulthood can be difficult. And it isn't just difficult for that individual person, but also for the family who might have to find a new routine and may even have to face new obstacles. East Kilbride Hangout Club, as Linda already addressed, a gap in the provision of services in the town, and it's a gap that couldn't be plugged right now without volunteers. So I'm really glad to see they have been nominated for the Carer of the Year Award. And again, we, Jenny Cook, the work that she's actually done as a young person, fundraising for Crohn's, Colitis and York Hill, and even volunteering as a hospital buddy for sick children. And she is an exemplary candidate for the Real Heroes Courage Award. And there are others. Use, reuse and recycle have come to this parliament before to tell us about their social enterprise. They recycle building materials and furniture at a profit to reinvest in the community. In addition to diverting waste from landfill, they place people, including people with disabilities, in employment and in training programmes. Margaret Gibb of the West of Scotland Play Scheme has given 30 years to supporting playgroups and play scheme. The driving force gives their time to help transport hospital patients in central Scotland. And in Coatbridge, the home of so many of our star athletes from the Commonwealth Games, two of the town's sport and fitness enthusiasts have been shortlisted for the Sport and Volunteer of the Year Award. Presiding officer, these nominations, these heroes, are the people who make Scotland the given nation that it is. I look forward to seeing them on STV and I wish them every success in the awards. Thank you. Thank you. And I now call on Stuart Macmillan to be followed by Margaret Mitchell. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. East Kilbride does indeed have real heroes uh, and, uh, and I commend them all, but, uh, but so too does every other part uh, of Scotland as well. Uh, but certainly listening to Linda Fabiani uh, and talking about uh, Jenny Cook and, uh, and Moore's Mafia, uh, certainly very much uh, tremendously in inspirational, uh, and certainly I thank Linda uh, for doing that. Uh, I do want to thank Linda Fabiani for securing this important debate. Uh, I think recognising the excellent work that takes place every single day across the country is important, and today's debate, I hope, actually adds to, uh, to that recognition. And I do want to put them on record, however, my congratulations to all the nominees from all over Scotland. Now, the list reminds us all that Scotland is full of outstanding entrepreneurs, uh, talented athletes, <coughs> conscious citizens and compassionate caretakers. And Scotland's Real Heroes is a programme which highlights those who have had a positive impact on the community, uh, inviting the Scottish people to get to know what they've done and also encourage them to support efforts and become involved in their own community. Now, I'd like to recognise just one of those great nominees. It's uh, a lady called Vicky McCarthy from Inverclyde. Now, Ms McCarthy is the founder and executive director of Reach for Autism. And uh, Vicky is very much a hardworking and proud mother, and she has a child with autism. And she's been, uh, one of the she is one of the nominees in the Community Entrepreneur of the Year Award. Now, over the last few years, Vicky has been of, uh, been of great support to many parents. And she has worked uh, as a nurse, both domestically and abroad, but not long ago felt that uh, she ought to change direction and focus her efforts on studying autism after her daughter was diagnosed in 2005. Now, she is without doubt passionate about helping people with autism to reach their full potential and to become contributing valued members of the local community. Uh, she would also like to help and, support, uh, help and support their families, helping them to better understand and appreciate their loved ones uh, with autism. Now, Reach for Autism founded when Vicky became frustrated uh, with a lack of support and services for people living with autism. And Vicky and a group of parents and allies decided to take matters into their own hands and work to provide a long-term sustainable solution. Not by replacing or duplicating what is done, but by working to plug any gaps in service delivery. REACH uh, provides uh, a wide range of support and services for people with autism and their loved ones. And the organisation has stated that the primary goal is to create connection and community for all people with autism. Now, REACH has developed uh, their own method known as the REACH Way, uh, a simple approach which focuses on relationships, education, action, community and health. It's very clever, that. Uh, now, this method is delivered by a team that includes parents of autistic children, occupational therapists, social workers, families, 
community supporters and also other members of the community. And the programme is an excellent way to create both community integration and involvement. Now, some of the specific programmes organised uh, by REACH include uh, group workshops, educational courses, seminars, stress management programmes and a newsletter covering current events and issues in the community which relate to autism. And REACH has grown uh, rapidly and earlier this year uh, they opened a base in Rather Street in Greenock uh, and only this week Michael Matheson, MSP, the Scottish Government's Public Health Minister, paid them a visit. Uh, I know that he certainly was greatly impressed by what he had seen, particularly as he had actually met Vicky and another couple uh, of uh, representatives only a couple of years ago when they had bags of enthusiasm and support but they had precious little resource. Now Vicky is a truly remarkable woman uh, and, uh, and she'll, she'll probably uh, chin me for this uh, when I see her next time. Uh, she's certainly not scared of asking people for help and once she actually has your number and she has your email address and that you know that she is actually going to use it and she does uh, and I don't mind that because I know that Vicky and her team actually are doing positive work and they are getting results. In closing, presiding officer, uh, I wish to express my gratitude uh, to the organisers of the Real Heroes programme and their efforts to recognise a few of the many people working to make Scotland an incredible place. They have high standards and indeed it's an honour uh, for anyone to be nominated. And again, I wish to congratulate all of the nominees for the Scotland Heroes Award and once again thank Linda Fabiani for bringing this to the Parliament. Thank you. Thank you. I now call on Margaret Mitchell after which I move the closing speech from the Minister. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I begin by thanking Linda Fabiani for bringing this debate to the Chamber today. Given the current culture of an increasing obsession with celebrity and fame often achieved through reality TV or by an individual's relentless self-promotion, it is gratifying and entirely appropriate that those who selflessly give up their own time and work within their local communities to make a real difference to people's lives have been given the opportunity not only to be recognised by STV Scotland's Real Heroes Award, but also in this chamber today. Nominations for the awards were sought from anyone in the local community who wished to highlight the valuable work of their friends, neighbours or colleagues. And I understand, as Linda confirmed earlier, that filming of the nominees uh, with awards presenter Carol Smiley is progressing and the first episode is due to be screened on Friday 15th of August. This is the second year that STV and the Royal Bank of Scotland have embarked on the, the search for Scotland's real heroes. Previous winners from last year include Alf Collington, who set up the Falkirk Food Bank, and Marie O'Keefe, CEO of Scotland's only respite centre that specialises in outings for people with MS. It's also very encouraging that of the 30 nominees this year, two are from East Kilbride and almost a quarter are from Central Region. Linda Fabiani has already spoken about East Co-Brides Elmer Ross, Lynn Morrison, uh, Leslie McGinley and Connie Smiley, aka Maz Mafia. And the superb work these women have been involved in improving the lives of young adults with special needs. The East Co-Bride Hangout, these mums run on a Monday night at Calder Glen High, has proved the only local support service which offers activities for 18 to 25 year olds with disabilities and learning difficulties. And 11 year old Jenny Cook, despite facing huge challenges in her own young life, has been inspiring in raising £30,000 for two compelling causes, namely York Hills Children's Charity and Catherine McCune Foundation. The latter aims to improve the lives of sufferers with Crohn's disease and colitis, and the money raised goes, goes towards further research and training about inflammatory bowel diseases. York Hill Children's Charity is based at York Hill Hospital and helps to improve the experience of being in hospital for countless, of cho countless children who are sadly required to be patients. The charity has in the past funded millions of pounds towards child-specific medical equipment and support for the families and parents of children for whom visiting hospital has been the, pre the predominant experience of their life. Other nominees from the central region include Pat Bannon, a 66-year-old from my native Coatbridge, 
who has been nominated for Supporting Volunteer of the Year. Pat is being recognised for encouraging members of his community to get fit. And Andrew Canbow, also from Coatbridge, has been uh, nominated for the same award for providing low-cost and sometimes free taekwondo lessons for children in the area. Margaret Gibb from Bells Hill has been recognised for, the, as Margaret, I think, mentioned, 30 years she has given to play groups and play schemes in the area. Truly astounding. And also Bells Hill-based use, spelt Y-O-O-Z, reuse and recycle, has also been nominated for Envi the Environmental Project of the Year, which provides products from unwanted buildings and sells them on at a reduced rate. Since 2009, the project has saved a staggering 4,000 4, tonnes plus of supposed waste material from going to the landfill. Uh, presiding officer, I consider myself privileged to represent a region where so many of my constituencies are giving up their time to set up initiatives and to creatively aid and engage with such varied and worthwhile projects. And STV and RBS, as sponsors, are to be congratulated on introducing the Real Heroes Awards, offering, as it does, well-deserved recognition for these selfless and public-spirited local groups and individuals as well as um, recognising our local animal heroes. Thank you very much. I now call Minister Aileen Campbell to close the debate on behalf of the Government. Seven minutes are thereby, please, Minister. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and uh, thank you also, though, to Linda Fabiani for bringing to our attention the outstanding work of both Jenny Cook and, the, I agree, the fabulously named Moz Mafia, uh, to our attention, Lynn Morrison, Leslie McGinley, Elmer Ross and Connie Smiley. And I congratulate Jenny on her nomination for a Scotland's Real Heroes Courage Award and Moz Mafia for its nomination in the Carer of the Year of, uh, category. And like Linda and others, I'd, I'd also like to commend RBS and STV for running the Scotland's Real Heroes uh, Awards and for the series of programmes which will recognise Scottish people who put others before themselves. And as Margaret McCulloch, Stuart McMillan and Margaret Mitchell all rightly noted, there are heroes in absolutely every community. And it's great to see them being recognised and given the recognition that they deserve. But how can you possibly choose a winner when you look at the, the shortlist, which is full of absolutely amazing people and inspirational stories? So good luck to absolutely everyone on that list and congratulations to all of them. I want though to particularly start and, and to, uh, uh, emphasise the work of uh, Jenny, both on being nominated and also on being shortlisted for the Courage uh, award. Now, Jenny, as we've heard from many speakers, is a remarkable young uh, girl who, despite her own ongoing health issues, has dedicated her energy and time into raising significant funds to help others. And she's pledged to raise 50,000 and has already raised, as Linda said, over 31,000 phenomenal figures uh, for someone who is so young. And her fundraising is directly benefiting the lives of other children who suffer from inflammatory bowel diseases. And that's something that young people do all the time, is they want to put back into the system something to help others who are going through a similar story. So I think these funds have been used to provide days out for other young people and their families and to support research activities. And this vital support is making a real difference to the lives of sufferers both now and in the future. And as is evident from today's debate, we have all been impressed by Jenny and her dedication, who at just 11 years of age is making such an impact on the lives of others. This selfless work is truly inspirational to us all. And as all, Linda also said, she has a real fan in the First Minister who uh, met with her here in Holyrood earlier this year and, of course, was his guest at the Commonwealth Games opening ceremony. Now, Jenny does sterling work, and this is not going unnoticed. She is a young ambassador for York Hill Children's Charity and is also part of the York Hill Buddy Scheme, helping to support other young people who are frequent patients at York Hill. And she is uh, a radio star too, regularly appearing on Robin, Radio Clyde's Robin Galloway Sunday show. And we, Jenny, now has a high public profile which raises the profile of her fundraising activities, which in turn benefits the children and their families who attend children, York Hill Children's uh, Hospital. And at 11 years old, I don't really know how she manages to find the time to do all those things. Truly a remarkable uh, lady uh, and someone that we should celebrate 
uh, very much so, and it's good that we're getting the opportunity to do so here uh, uh, in the Chamber. And that, of course, is complemented by the work that we're doing as a government and taken forward by my colleague Michael Matheson to try and help others who are sufferers of inflammatory bowel disease uh, and Crohn's and colitis uh, as well. So we should uh, also recognise the work that Michael Matheson is doing, but certainly the, the work that Jenny is doing is what we're here to celebrate today. Now, turning now to, to Moz Mafia, I also want to congratulate Elma Ross, Lynn Morrison, Leslie McGinley, Connie Smiley, and everyone else who's involved for the commitment, the tireless effort, and the dedication that they have shown in establishing and running Moz Mafia. Their hard work is benefiting many young people with disabilities and learning difficulties in East Kilbride, including their own children. And the impact, I think, of this project cannot be underestimated. And the very fact that the family of Stephanie Kennelly, one of its attendees, has nominated them for a Real Hero Award is testament to just how much the project means to the individuals that attends and their families. And I think it should be recognised as an outstanding model of, lo of, of local communities using their own assets to deliver a service that meets the needs of the community. And we should also learn from it to address barriers of isolation and loneliness that other young disabled people may be experiencing in other areas of Scotland. And with the legislative changes we have made as part of our reform to public services, the Public Bodies Joint Working Act, the recently passed Children and Young People Act, which I took through Parliament, and self-directed support, we should not lose sight of these young people who need support and who, like every other young person across Scotland, want to have their pals about them and to have those connections with others. The need to address isolation and loneliness is highlighted in the 2010 evaluation of the same as you. And it told us that only one in three people interviewed were able to name at least one close friend. And this is why the Scottish Government, in partnership with Equal Futures and other relevant organisations, held a friendship event in January of this year to help people with learning disabilities to be supported to have more friends. And it's our intention to plan for more events this year. But we can't take the foot off the gas on getting transitions right and ensuring simple things like solid relationships are valued. Our current strategy is to improve the lives of people with learning disabilities, autism and their families and carers. Uh, the keys to life and the Scottish strategy for autism are in underpinned by human rights and the principles that are based upon dignity, choice and realising potential. Young people with learning disabilities should have opportunities in their communities that enable them to socialise and to be part of that community. And we know that having an active social life and feeling included helps improve health and well-being for people with learning disabilities and autism. So that is why we are delighted to commend Moz Mafia for giving young people with disabilities and learning difficulties an environment where they can socialise and enjoy a range of different activities and experiences. And their work is an embodiment of what we're trying and aiming to achieve. Uh, we are also as well as supporting young people with disabilities and learning difficulties, the Scottish Government is investing in support for carers. Carers like Elma, Lynn, Leslie and Connie at Moe's Mafia to continue to care for their families, friends and neighbours and also to lead a life alongside their caring responsibilities. And that's why we've uh, committed significant resources of nearly 114 million to supporting carers between 2007 and 15. And we've also invested nearly 14 million in the Voluntary Sector Short Breaks Fund, which allows carers, young carers and cared for persons to take a break from their caring responsibilities, giving them an opportunity to relax without feeling stress or feeling guilty. And over 8 million of that is, uh, investment has gone into supporting children and young people with disabilities and their carers. So to conclude, Presiding Officer, I couldn't agree more with the speakers today who praise Jerry and the Moz Mafia so highly. With their help and with the help of others like them, the Scottish Government will continue to work towards its aspiration to make Scotland the best place in the world to grow up. But that can only ever be achieved if we work in partnership and in truly valuing the work of our army of volunteers right across every community in our country. So I do wish Jenny Cook and Moz Mafia, Pat Bannon, Mac, uh, Vicky McCarthy and everyone who else who has been uh, mentioned and all those who are on the shortlist all the very best 
at the Scottish, Scotland's Real Heroes Award ceremony in September. And I wish Jenny continued success in her fundraising activities and Moz Mafia continued success in running the much valued uh, service in East Kilbride. Scotland does have a hugely uh, talented uh, army of people there doing amazing things for people and creating better lives and life chances for so many. So we should value them. And it's a great uh, privilege to be able to speak and conclude in this debate for the government. So again, thank you to Linda Fabiani for bringing these two wonderful uh, groups uh, to our attention and for allowing us to celebrate them in an appropriate and highly uh, respectful way. Thank you. Many thanks. And I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30.